Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you 10 path tool tips and tricks for GIMP. I'm using GIMP version 2.10.24 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, I have tons of video tutorials on here as well as my help articles, so definitely check that out. You can get access to more content by becoming a DMD Premium member, and that includes a premium version of this tutorial that has five bonus path tool tips and tricks. And you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. I'll be using a couple of free photos for today's tutorial. Here's one of them. I will include links to these in the description of the video. All right, so here is the composition we'll be working with for today's tutorial. I can navigate here over to the Paths tab, and here you can see the four paths I've already drawn ahead of time. And one quick thing I want to note before I get into the tips is that usually when you draw a path like this using the Paths tool, and let's hold Control Create a Union to close this shape, if I were to grab another tool, so let's say I grab the move tool, that path is going to be hidden by default. So you do have to come over here and unhide the path. And that's why you can see all my paths over here in the paths tab. So let's hit the B key on the keyboard to grab the paths tool. So my first tip is that you can select multiple nodes inside of a single path. So when you have your paths tool selected, just click on a path and that's going to select it. Here you can see we have nodes here for our path. And by the way, for a complete introduction to the Paths tool, I recommend checking out my Master the Paths tool tutorial on my channel. But you can always click on one of these nodes if you want to move it like so. I'll hit Control Z. But if I want to move multiple nodes simultaneously, I can click on a node and then Shift click on a second node. And I can do this for as many nodes as I want. So I can Shift click on this third node here. And then I can click and drag my mouse and you'll see that's gonna move those three nodes together. And then when I'm ready, I can release. If I wanted to unselect any of these, I can shift click and that's going to deselect that node. And now when I go to move this, you'll see only two of the nodes will move. The second tip is that you can reposition a segment between two nodes. So the line here in between two nodes Simply by hovering your mouse over the segment, you'll see that my mouse pointer will change and now we have what looks like the move tool there above the little path tool icon. And so once your mouse pointer changes, you can click and drag the segment and there you'll see it's going to change the shape of our segment. It's going to turn it into a sort of arc. And you'll also see here that each of the nodes here on either side of the segment are gonna have handles. And of course you can always come over here and manually adjust those handles. So simply click and drag your mouse over the line segment and that allows you to change it. The third tip is that you can delete individual nodes. So if I come up here, let me shift click to deselect that node there. So now we only have this node selected. All I have to do to delete nodes is hit the backspace key. And what GIMP is gonna do is it's gonna automatically adjust the segment here so that it goes through that original node point and then ends here at this new node point. So again, all I have to do is click on a node, hit the backspace key. You can also control shift and click on a node that will also delete a node. And if you wanted to delete multiple nodes simultaneously, just click on the nodes you wanna delete. So there's the first one. Shift click on the second node here. Shift click, let's go with the third node. And now again, hit the backspace key and that will get rid of those nodes. So I'll hit control Z to back up so we can undo deleting all those nodes and let's undo moving this segment. The next tip is probably my favorite tip. So this has to do with creating curves with your nodes here. So when you have a curve, you're gonna see the handles here on either side of the node. So in this case here, we don't have a curve. The handles are actually there inside of the circle. They're just hard to see because they're really small. If I were to hold control and click and drag, it would create one handle. Hold control, click and drag, it would create another handle. So the tip here is, as you could tell right now, these handles are acting independent of one another. So as I drag one handle, nothing is happening to the other handle. If you come from another program like Photoshop, this could be kind of annoying since Photoshop has the two handles working together. Well, the tip is that if you hold the shift key and drag a handle, it's actually going to activate what's called symmetric mode. And that just basically means whatever you do to one handle is gonna be mirrored inside of the other handle. So as you can see, 
I'm dragging this handle up and this handle is going down and it's going down at the same angle. So basically that's just creating a nice symmetric curve here through the node. So that's a really helpful tip whenever you're working with these handles. As you can see, I've released the shift key. Now I'm holding the shift key. So that's just a very useful little tip there. Another thing to note about this tip is that it also works on line segments. So as I mentioned, when you hover your mouse over a line segment, you can then move that segment. So right now it's only creating a single node, but if I hold the shift key, you'll see that both of those nodes now have symmetric lines going through them, or basically the handles are now symmetric. So that's creating nice symmetric curves that pass through each of those nodes. So I'll hit control Z to back up. So for tip number five, I'll come over here to this other image. So for this tip, this has to do with drawing multiple paths. So let's say we're drawing a path along this curve here. I'm just gonna click and drag my mouse. And we're just going to very roughly draw this. And you can always come back to a node, by the way, and just adjust that handle after the fact. But let's come over here back to this node here. So I've drawn a curve here. Let's say I wanted to basically start this path at a new point, but I want it to be part of the same path. So I don't want the path to be connected, but I want the path to have the same properties. What I can do is create what's called a sub path. And I can do that by holding the shift key and then clicking to create a node. So these two paths, as far as GIMP is concerned, are gonna be the same path, but they do have a break there in the line segments. And now I can continue this path. So now if I were to stroke these paths, so let's say I come over here to the paths tab and come over here and click to stroke the path. And this is just gonna go with whatever color I have over here. And I'll hit stroke. Let's grab a separate tool like the move tool. It's kind of hard to see because I chose black, but you could see that there's a stroke right here, this black stroke. And here you could see the stroke continues over here but there is a break between the two strokes. So basically these are considered one path, except they are disjointed. If I come over here and unhide the path inside the paths tab, you'll see both of these areas light up. So that's just another cool feature of GIMP. Tip number six is that paths can actually be transformed using pretty much any transform tool in GIMP. So all I have to do to activate this feature is grab a transform tool. So for example, let's go with the Unify Transform tool. You can pretty much use any of these, but let's go Unify Transform. All you have to do to ensure the transform tools work with paths is come over here to the tool options and make sure the transform mode is set to path. So that's gonna be the third option there. Once it's set to path, now whenever I click on a path, you'll see we're gonna get our little transform handles and now I can do whatever to this so I can scale it up. As I'm holding control, I can, let's come over here, I can shear this and I can rotate it. So basically I can perform any transformations on any path. I'll come over here and hit transform and now that has transformed the path. Just make sure when you do set this to the path mode, I recommend switching it back to layer mode once you're done. Otherwise it can be confusing when you're trying to perform a transformation on an image, but it's not working because you have this in the wrong mode. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna exit out of there. So on a similar note, tip number seven is that you can actually transform lock your paths just like you can do with layers. So let's come back over here to the original composition. So you've already seen the little eye icon, the show hide icon in action. There's also a little transform lock icon there. So for those of you who have seen my tutorial on the transform lock feature, you know how this works with layers. Basically, anytime you transform lock multiple layers, they will scale together or transform together. Well, that also works with paths. So anytime you have paths transform locked, they will transform together. So let's say I wanted to transform all of the paths in this composition. I can transform lock the paths. And the other cool thing is that if the layer here is transform locked, that means the layer also will transform along with the paths. So let's hit shift S on the keyboard. Because I'm including the image in this, I can keep the transform mode set to layer here. But if I only had paths in here, I would have to change this to path. But let's just see what happens here. So I'm gonna scale this down, hold the control key and the shift key to maintain the aspect ratio. Right now it's only transforming the layer, but let's come over here and hit scale. 
So as you can see there, it transformed all the paths. So everything here inside of our composition has now scaled down. Let's hit Control Z to back up. I do wanna demonstrate that without the layer involved here. So let's unlink the layer, come back over here to paths. If I try to scale this right now, it will still try to scale my image. So let's come over here and grab the path mode. And I can pretty much just click anywhere here on the composition and just scale one of these down. Come over here, hit scale, and you'll see all the other paths will follow suit. So I'll hit control Z to back up. So for tip number eight, let's come back over here to the paths tool. And I'm just gonna come over here and click on a new path to activate it. So by default, your edit mode for your path is gonna be set to design. However, you can also enter either edit or move mode. And you can enter edit mode using the control key. So I'm holding the control key to toggle that or you can go into move mode by holding the alt key. So move mode, of course, just allows you to reposition this. Let me hit control Z to back up, but let's go into edit mode here. So the tip for this is that you can actually delete a segment between two nodes after you've drawn it. And the way to do that when you're inside of edit mode is to simply hold the shift key and you'll see a little plus icon there on my mouse. So if I hold the shift key, it changes to a minus sign. So now when I click on this line segment, it'll only delete the segment. You'll see it'll keep the nodes there and we can do this with any segment. So with the plus icon, I can click, that'll create a node on that segment. And I do have to go back into design mode in order to be able to move that segment or to be able to move that node, I should say. And if I hold control, it'll enter edit mode as you can see over there, hold the shift key, you'll get that minus sign, click here and that will delete that line segment. So again, hold control and shift, click. If I just hold control, it'll give me the plus sign. I can click and that allows me to create the node. And then I can reposition that so long as I'm in design mode. And again, control shift, we can delete that segment. So let me hit control Z and just back up to get back to our original path. So tip number nine builds upon a concept you guys are probably already aware of. And that is that you can create selection areas from paths. So if I were to click on this path, so right now we're on path two. If I come over here and create a selection from this, there you'll see a selection area. Well, for this tip, you can actually compound selection areas when you're creating selection areas from paths. And you can do that using the key modifiers. So let's say we wanted to add to this selection here. So we wanted to create a selection from this shape. Let's come over here to that shape. And now if I hover my mouse over the little selection icon, you'll see the key modifiers there. So shift will add the path to the selection, control will subtract it, and shift and control will create an intersection, meaning only this area here will be kept. So let's add this by shift clicking. And there you can see now the selection shapes have been compounded. On the other hand, let's say we wanted to subtract this. Let's come back over here subtract, you're gonna hold control and click. And now this shape has been subtracted. And let me just exemplify this one more time by adding this shape here. So let's come back up top here. We're gonna shift click to add that. And now we've created a compound selection area. So control shift A to deselect that. Tip number 10, which is the final tip for this tutorial. And again, don't forget to check out my five bonus path tool tips inside of the premium version of this tutorial by becoming a DMD premium member. But tip number 10 is that you can delete individual handles for a node. So let's come back over here to path one to demonstrate this. So as you can see here, I have two handles on this node. Let's say I wanted to delete one of these. First, I'm gonna click on the handle to make sure it's active. And then I'm gonna hold control and shift and once again, you're gonna get that minus sign. So if I click on the handle, you'll see it'll only delete that one handle. So now I've only got one handle here. This is going to move independently. If I wanted to add the handle back, as I demonstrated earlier, I can hold control, click and drag, and now our handle has returned. And of course, hold the shift key, and that will enter that symmetrical mode. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.